Hey, buddies! It is not Potato McWhiskey. That's right, as you've probably figured out by now, he's off on holiday, having a great time, not doing YouTube as we all wish that we could every now and then. My name is Ursa Ryan. I am yet another Civ 6 YouTuber out there making content. Hello, nice to meet you. And it's my absolute pleasure to be bringing you this one-off episode where I thought I'd show you one of the crazier Civ 6 strategies that we've been having fun with recently. Now, those of you who know I am or have watched my stuff before, you'll know my love of Hungary. Hungary are a fantastic Civ on Civ 6 because they play so well with city-states and I love playing with city-states and that's a very interesting sentence. In short, they levy them really, really well. And because of that, I thought I'd show you quite a fun little play, which is the Hungry Early Game Rush. Now to pull this off, I'm doing something I don't normally do. I'm ignoring religion. If you wanna watch more of my stuff, usually I'm very, very particular at always focusing on getting religions. I love them. I honestly think they're really, really good. But for once, we're not gonna bother. We're gonna be beelining campuses. We're gonna be beelining commercial hubs. And we're going to be beelining encampments for all different reasons. Oh, one other thing that you should know about my videos, I play with a lot of mods on, like a lot of YouTubers do. They're all cosmetic mods. If you want a full list, come to my Discord. I'll leave a link in the description of the video. I keep a full list of all the mods I use. These are the uh, details, the deets of the map if you want to play it. But again, I keep the save files of all of the maps I play in my Discord. You can just copy and paste it and have a go on it. It's a Pangea map. It's hungry. We're playing with city states. It's going to be fun. Now, in order to get a good early game rush, we're going to be playing around with heroes and legends and secret societies. Of which secret societies I'm not really too focused on. We've got a bunch of different options. I can go Owls of Minerva, I could go for vampires, because why would you not go for Hungarian vampires, honestly? There's lots of options you could go for, but the heroes and legends is kind of what I'm focused on a little bit here. I could be happy with any number of heroes to help me with an early game rush. Hercules or Heracles is absolutely fantastic because he's really beefy and strong but also puts down districts. Hippolyta, because she can double move units and then recharges her health every turn, is brilliant. Mulan is brilliant at killing units. Oya is often overlooked as well. Healing units, massively useful skill in Civ 6. Healing is very difficult to do outside of promotions. And possibly my favourite, Himiko. If she comes up, then, you know, between Hungary and levying city-states is going to be absolutely ridiculous. I think I'm going to settle in place here. Um, there's lots of different options. You can see, oh, we've actually found a continent first. I love it when you get that five era score start. It means that hopefully we're going to go and get ourselves a golden age in that first era. But you can see we've got a pretty decent couple of four yield tiles. Step one. I'm going to be going straight towards pottery. We're going to meet some people. We're going to go for writing. Already I can see that that is at least a plus three campus up here. Looks like that might be mounting up on that tile as well. Or at least maybe one of these two. So maybe a plus four. I'm going to go for a one scout rush, I think, and then switch over to building a monument. I like to have an early game monument on any game with heroes and legends so we can jump on those immediate things. Oh, look, an immediate flood. Yay. Don't, don't you love it when that happens to your only warrior? Oh my god, another flood just happened there. Just stay out of the floodplains, you lunatic. Hippolyta, we've already found her first. And I think, is that the first? Yeah, I got the first envoy for Johannesburg. Hooray! Now comes the initial scout. I'm going to be sending you down the river. It's always good to explore up and down rivers in Civ. That's typically when you're going to be settling anyway, so you might as well just go for it. I have a builder from a goodie hut. That's actually quite useful. Okay, well, we'll hang on to that one. Leventa. I've just met them and I'm the first people to meet them as well. So that, again, is pretty decent. And Hattusa, Anansai. Okay, Anansai is actually a good hero as well. Not as good at combat, but you can get some huge culture and science boosts. Oh, and someone's down here as well. There's the irrigation boost and a lovely five yield tile right from the bat. Oh, lovely stuff. Victoria. Oh, no. The guy from England meets Vicky as the first Civ. Ugh. Actually, you know what? She generally behaves herself. It all depends on whether or not we're on the same continent. And it looks like I probably won't be, because I'm guessing she's probably over on this continent divide. Hungary often starts on the divide between continents. So, you know what? There's a good chance that she's not going to be playing ball with me. Oh, look at this. Just nabbing in and stealing the barb camp. That's 30 gold military edition boost. Brilliant. I'm saving up 200 gold. That is the first thing and pretty much the most important thing that I need to pick up on this run. As I say, step one was beelining writing. And there's the Void Singers. Now that is our first particular secret society, which means we now have our first governor. 
option, which is brilliant. Now, normally I would use it to either get a secret society or to put Pingala in. Pingala's a really good starting governor. It gets you lots of science and culture, but we're playing the hungry play. It doesn't matter what our cities do. Our cities are pointless compared to the city-states. So I'm going to be getting city-states met, an unmet player with them. Oh, but nobody is friends with Leventa. So which is more important? Do I want the production? Or do I want the... I mean, it really is not going to make much of a difference. I'm going to put Amani... Where are you? There you go. And I'm going to stick her in... Let's go for Johannesburg. Perfect. There's the monument complete. Hippolyta is, is an amazing pickup. Hercules would be good. Himiko is good. The, the, the trick with heroes is you kind of want to wait until the classical era before you get them. Yes, 32 melee strength is good. But you wait until the classical era... If you can, you get a lot more combat strength for your buck. So, I mean, it's a good one. I think I might just go for the first... Yeah, let's go for a settler. I kind of like to nab this space between me and England because there's a decent library or campus there. That's kind of, I'm, I'm kind of hoping that I can get Hercules. Hercules is a fantastic early game hero. There's Poland as well. Okay, they are over here. So actually, Johannesburg will help me to get into Polish territory quite nicely. Because, yeah, this is going to be an aggressive game. So there is the suzerain. And we have just discovered Himiko. Right, my, my, yeah, my plans have changed drastically. Himiko I'm picking up first. She's brilliant because she uses her charges to pick up more envoys with city-states to levy the units in city-states, which, hint, is going to be a very important thing for me to do, as well as being able to use her to get me faith when I've already got suzerainship with the city-state and I'm using envoys in them anyway. It's all good. Oh, actually... Waiting for Poland to beat this barb camp. I might be able to just sneak in here and steal it. Um, joint wars. Always go for foreign trade over craftsmanship. I see a lot of people going for Ilka Magogi the better policy cards. Which, yes, they are very good policy cards. Joint wars. I tell you, man. Joint wars is where it's at. Now, have... Now, importantly, Poland and England haven't met each other yet, but we're going to keep an eye on that one. And I'm going to go for Discipline and God King. Always go God King. It's so much better than Urban Planning. I hear a lot of people going for Urban Planning. Do God King. Get that Pantheon as quickly as you can. Trust me. It's always worth going for an early Pantheon. Oh, I think I can do it. Have they left it? Have they left it for me? Yes. Sanguine Pact, but also the 30 gold. The 30 gold is the most important here. I'm just saving up to 200. I'm not spending anything, but I just need that 200 gold as quickly as I can get it, really. Here she is. Himiko. Eight charges. Eight envoys and the ability to convert and take over the city-state troops. In fact, actually, that's actually really useful. I don't even need the early game gold. I can just go straight and grab it, which is brilliant. Step two. Now we've got writing. I'm going to go for bronze working. I need to know where that iron is immediately so that I can jump and go for swordsmen. Swordsmen are the most important early stage part of a hungry run. Could I make a joke about being hungry for iron? I could. Would potato fans enjoy that sort of dad humor? I don't know. We'll, we'll see how we go. Got Mali up to the north. To up north. I think Poland is the easiest initial target because I've got two city-states next to her. So I'm immediately going to go for the denouncing of her. Surprise wars are fun, but denouncing means that we can try and get a joint war with an ally. Or an ally. I say an AI. The AI is never truly an ally, really, is it? They're just sort of meat puppets that you try and scam money from. So I'm going to use her rule, Himiko's rule, to take over Johannesburg's army. That means I have five envoys with Johannesburg because I get two envoys for Hungary for levying army, which is great because I can now immediately move Amani on to Leventa. And in five turns time, I'm going to be able to take that army over. Although actually saying that, maybe it would be better to use her on Hattusa. I think it's probably better if I use her on Hattusa because I can sort of double up and claim that army over there. Because Himiko has got seven charges left. She can do Leventa the hard way. Now the best bit about Hungarian levied armies is the extra movement speed as well as the extra combat strength. So they can move super quickly, which is which is just, oh, it's, it's so much fun. So there's Leventa boosted as well. Fantastic. 240. Okay, so Leventa actually has more army than Johannesburg did, which is even better. Brilliant stuff. You just need to keep an eye, actually, on the envoy list. If ever somebody equals the amount of envoys I've got in the city-state, I lose all the army. And it's more annoying that it is a problem, but don't don't let it be the problem, you know? Here is Leventa's army as well. Perfect. So I've now got a huge, huge amount of early game warriors for me to play with here, which is very fun. 
Now this is why, this is why you don't declare surprise wars. Now, if Poland has met Mali, I can declare a joint war with Mali against Poland and they will give me a bunch of gold. The AI actually favours war way more than you would think. And they're just itching. They've got 141 military strength. They want to have a go at Poland, but they know that their military is smaller. But with mine combined, the military com uh, scores are now above Poland. So they're like, yeah, go for it. And I'll take a bunch of gold to do that. So yes, absolutely. He's basically going to be bankrolling my empire whilst that happens. Uh, give it one turn, I'll be able to buy Hattusa's army just with my own funds, which is, which is just insane. Now, Poland does have a bit of an army, and I've only got warriors here. So, I mean, I'm not exactly brilliant. Yes, all of my units have a nice plus five. But what I'm going to do is I'm just going to leave them fortified on a lot of the hills here. Um, and let the warriors come to me. I'm going to let them attack me, especially whilst Himiko is around. She gives plus five combat strength to all units within two tiles. It's a huge bonus. Very handy bonus, that one. But I just need to let them kind of use their attacks on me. Because at the moment, if I'm attacking there, they've got river defense, they've got ideal terrain. It means they're easily going to win. But they attack me, it's the total opposite. Uh, the Aztecs, like these guys know, they understand. They understand. So there is Hattusa. And exactly the same thing going on here. What we're going to do is we're just going to levy the military. Um, it's only 200 gold, which is which is great, but it just means that we've got a lot more units. We can just have a little play around. Oh, eagle warriors! Oh, I hate I hate early game Aztecs. They're terrifying, <laughs> absolutely terrifying. So the first part of my plan, remember, is just picking up campuses. Now I need early game science because I want to rush to swordsman as quick as I can, and all of that early game science I can get, it all helps. I've also got a pantheon which is brilliant. I'm just trying to think of the best one that I could get for myself, really. Today I'm actually going to get the God of War. Now this is one of those overlooked pantheons people don't tend to go for very often, but 50% of the strength of each combat unit killed in faith being added, as long as I fight within eight tiles of a holy site. Well, it doesn't have to be my holy site. Poland is actually building them for me. And because of that, as long as I fight within their holy sites, I'm going to have exactly the same level. They're building one here as well. So I can pick up a bunch of faith. Now, why is faith important? Well, between the pillaging faith I get and the other faith, eventually Himiko is going to run out. And I need to renew her, one-up her, uh, pick her back up. And if I don't have any faith income because I haven't bothered building holy sites, which is, you know, a very real risk of mine, I tend to sort of ignore those. And I'm going to have to make sure that I've got enough faith to do it manually. Right, Himiko is now in. And you can see now that I've got the five bonus from inspiring heroes nearby, as well as the Raven King traits, I actually now have enough combat strength to really be taking on um, Poland's warriors, which is, which is a nice change, actually. Oh, yeah, look, they took the bait. They took the bait. So they just attacked across the river and did 72 damage to themselves. Not a clever idea at all. In fact, actually, now... I can come in and I can sort of finish this one off for them. So I just go kablonk like that and it's, it's dead. Now if it wasn't for the fact that Mali's sending me so much gold, I'd be tempted to go after them with the new city-state armies. Ugh, and Aztecs are just a bit too strong. So I'm actually going to just use these warriors to sort of come back around and, and send these to the front line in the other direction. I just found Hercules in a tribal hut. What was he doing in there? Just chilling, having a fun time. Samarakand is going to be quite a useful little place. I just picked up an envoy from that tribal hut. I'm going to do the old switcheroo again. Amani, get into Samarakand. I think I'm adding a syllable to that under. It's Samarkand. Ugh, I'm terrible at those. Pronunciation, eh? Who would be good at it? Now, it's tempting to go for Tarnal first, but I'm actually going to go for Royal Claw. It's an easier city to siege because it's got a mountain on one side and it's got four populations, so it's going to have more loyalty pressure for me to use in order to take over. So if I move you to there, actually sieging the city might be pretty easy. In fact, there it is, it's already sieged. So moving my units down, I'm gonna move Himiko into the same sort of directions, move my units around so that I'm kind of, again, just fortifying and holding those defensive spots so that they're attacking me. But I'm gonna go for this city first and look already, 30 combat strength. That's nice, that's a good old hit. And as long as it's sieged, I can just sort of niggle away at those and uh, just watch the city fall. Now, I'm just about to get my third improved tile as well, so I'm just going to flick away from craftsmanship and go to early empire. Just got to watch my warriors here. I don't want to leave them too weak, just in case I... Oh, actually, Himiko is not even close enough. So, I think I'm actually good at this game sometimes. There's a bit of a misclick there. Never mind. 
the city is all falling. Now, ideally, what I'd like to be able to do is get the cities into a situation where I can actually take multiple in the same turn. That would be a very good result for me if I could do that. Simple reason being, just the loyalty is a lot easier to pick up if I've got two or three cities in the area all giving themselves loyalty. There we go. Tarnau is also now sieged, which is brilliant. Uh, I just need a warrior to be able to attack that is unlikely to get killed. This one actually is probably my least interesting warrior. So as long as the city remains sieged, I can kind of move my army around a little bit now. So I'm just going to wait for a second, let them all heal up just a tad, whilst Himiko comes back round. Uh, can I get the kill on that warrior? That would be handy if I could. It would just sort of push them further in. There we go, like that. There we go, starting to get faith per, um, for every kill. And now we can do the damage on this city as well. So the idea is I want to take both in the same go. Just found Akkad. Now this is now a city state of priority for me. Melee units do full damage against city walls. If Poland were to sprout walls up, that would be a city state. It would be very, very good to know. It's worth keeping in mind as well, but it also works on Renaissance walls and steel walls later in the game which people often forget. That's kind of like the main benefit to that ability. So, with that attack, there's the city taken from that one and the city taken from this one as well. So, I've gone from one cities oh, to four with this settlement as well in the space of about two turns, which is great. And now, actually, I can spend a couple of turns just healing my warriors up nicely as well. And saying that, now I'm just realizing I don't even need these reinforcements. I think I'm gonna start taking them down towards Vicky. Ho oh, ho! Oh. Exciting times. In fact, actually, should we do a preemptive denouncement of Vicky? There we go. And hopefully we can see if we can get some sort of joint war deal going with Montezuma because he he's great. He's also got iron, actually. That's well worth keeping an eye on. Iron is going to be super important for us. Now, if you've never seen the Quick Deals mod, again, I keep a list on Discord. This is well worth a go. This mod just streamlines how deals work in Civ, and it's really, really good. You can say, so I want to sell 10 diplomatic favor, and it gives you all the offers of the people that you can see on the map. Equally, I can go to them and I can say who's selling luxuries or who's selling diplomatic favor. And again, remember, turn 60 or, or, or sooner than that, the AI does not value diplomatic favor. So I can buy 11 of the stuff for one gold and 17 of it for two golds and hang on to it until later in the game when the AI does value it, AKA after the World Congress gets founded. It's just quite a little fun Fun little play you can do with that. With the era score for finishing a campus. I'm up to the giddy heights of 10 science per turn. Giddy, giddy heights. If I can kill that scout actually, that should help just to remove the bronze working boost. Cause I think I had, I had quite a bit of science going on. Levy the military, 240 gold. I can do that next turn with Samarakand. I'll do that and then I'll pick it up and go to Akkad. Oh, clever Poland, they have a spearman in their city that gives them a little bit more city defense but nothing that we can't handle we're just gonna have to press in manually a little bit and bump and now we can move Armani to probably her final resting place Akkad saying that I've got to temporarily move her to my city that I've just taken 18 turns and 20 turns I've got a little bit of an amenity squeeze going on at the moment um, because nobody has any that I can buy and I haven't improved any just yet. There is some tobacco over here, but I have, I'm in tobacco over in this, this location as well. So there is, there is, a, you know, amenities out there that I can improve. Just need to do a little bit better at that. Surprisingly, Poland want peace, but we're not going to let them off the hook. We have them right where we want them and that is great. So now that bronze working has been done, we just need to have a quick scan and see how much iron we've picked up. Uh, there is some by this Polish territory we're about to conquer, that's wonderful. Some up by Leventa, which could be improved immediately. We've got two up here, that's interesting. So actually I've got another settler on the way, that'll work perfectly. Um, okay, that will be why um, Mr. Marley has some. He hasn't discovered it just yet, and I think, was it, the Aztecs had some as well, so perfect. Okay, well we know we've got at least two copies of iron up to the north that we can use landing straight for ironworking. It's too important to tech. This is one of those few ones that I actually, I don't really care, don't really care if I improve it or not, or, or get the Eureka for it. I would rather just have it. Okay, Krakow is now surrounded. It's got a lot of defense. It's got a little bit of district boost actually going on here. So what I might do is just have a, see if I can nip one of my units around a scout maybe or something and go and just pillage it. That will help me to reduce it just a bit. Although this warrior is stood on a, something it can pillage for some health. 
and you can see Krakor's health and, and ability is now getting weaker and weaker as I do damage to it. So as long as it's sieged, I think this is fine. Of course, and Hattusa is giving me... Oh, Hattusa is giving me iron per turn as well because I haven't improved it. That's great. Okay, perfect. Well, there we go. We've got good options available to us. I always forget to pick up military tradition until I end up actually picking it through. So that's great that we've now got this one. Sticking with discipline because barbs are popping up everywhere. But military tradition gives you flanking bonuses. Flanking bonuses are great because then you can say, hey, look, he's that random slinger. Why are you there? And then pick it up and then suddenly I have a settler. I don't know why the computer does that so much, but they really do. They love to send an unescorted settler out just on a daily basis, and it always makes me smile. A little bit of squeezing. I think we should be able to finish this city off. I might end up losing maybe one warrior. No, I'm not even going to lose one warrior. Poland's out of the game. That is our first Civ taken by turn 38. And we haven't even actually started this strategy. I was going to sit here and say one of the main things people get wrong with this strategy is attacking before they have swordsmen. Um, but it turns out, you know, with a little bit of Himiko, you can you can do that. And it's fine. Coupe. Coupe is actually a nice person to find. Typically, their capital is way away from anything else. And they uh, they're quite easy to take over normally. So next up, after you've got your, your first campus in order to get just a little bit of science, you should be focusing on generals and merchants. Merchants give you the gold to actually buy out city-states. Encampments give you great generals. Great generals are brilliant things. Absolutely brilliant, because if you get a nice great general, you get a good combat boost, you get some movement boost. Ugh, it's all it's all lovely, really. As long as we've got swordsmen, the next uh, priority is getting currency, because currency goes towards man at arms, which is even more powerful. Uh, 65 gold for this. That is my boost. I have now unlocked Swordsman. Brilliant! Now, don't forget, one of the overlooked abilities of Hungary is that you can uh, upgrade city-state troops for 75% less gold and resources. So, an upgrade is 5 iron and 25 gold. It is not a lot. It is not a lot at all. If I can probably sell one of the wines to Marley quickly, just for 60 gold up front. I'm just about to pick up another copy of that one, so that's fine. And I can go, oh, which city-state troops are going to be with me the longer set of 11 turns, 12 turns, what about this one, 19 turns? Okay, perfect. These these ones are, are probably the best, so we'll upgrade one swordsman, two swordsmen. Lovely stuff. And now we've done that, I'm going to go Sanguine Pact, because now I have a vampire. <laughs> 35 strength. I'm, I'm not calling him Mr. Potato for any any reason, really. N not at all. My nice captured second city. I'm also going to try and pick up either Hercules or Hippolyta. Now, Hercules means that we can put districts down, but that's kind of useful at the beginning of the game. We already have momentum, and I want to keep that momentum going, so Hippolyta is the most useful one. She can double move units, she heals every turn. Generally speaking, she is outrageously fun. Time for a formal war with Victoria. Whoa. We are not amused. I know, I know. Actually, no one else has met her. Apart from Monty. Ah, oh, Monty's not going to join me because he's denounced me. Never mind. Right, 35 strength swordsmen. Aha! This should be more than enough to deal with the heavy chariots that are coming my way. I've also managed to move Himiko to Akkad. As I say, I just expect that England are going to put walls up, so instead of having to build a battering ram, I would rather just have Akkad on side and be able to just sort of, you know, bash through the walls with my fists. That is effectively what Akkad is. It's like, don't bother about it, just be one punch man. Just go, go straight through. There's the encampment. Okay, so I'm going to be the first person to start picking up general points. This is very nice. Very nice indeed. That first general would be really useful. So I'd quite like extra gold. I'd quite like extra general points. So I'm going to run a couple of encampment training courses just to see if I can boost that one through a little. You can see Bude is actually working quite a few unimproved tiles here, so Raina's going to go in. I'm going to stick her through because a couple of promotions in, and she can give me forestry management, which gives me wonderful extra gold, and then tax collector to give me even more gold on top of that. Again, overlooked as a governor, I feel. Like, you know, she's pretty damn good. Already this city is sieged. I don't know how that happened so quickly, but it did. Um, I, I barely moved my units in, but hey presto, we're going to go... Uh, one attack followed by two attacks, and suddenly I've got three swordsmen around Sheffield. Nice. 
You can denounce me all you like, my friend, but you're the one giving me all my money. Ha <laughs> ha! Actually, to be fair, when I can declare war on him, he'll be a pretty decent pickup for me. I have more of a resistance from the Barb forces than I do from actual English forces here. This is quite weirdly disconcerting. But Sheffield has fallen. That's the first of the English cities. And fingers crossed, should be the first one in. Oh, I've got perfectly good loyalty on it as well. So that's, that's pretty cool. We've still got iron coming in, still got my upgraded swordsman being worked out, I've got a vampire on the way as well. It sounds like I've got a child. Oh, there's a vampire on the way, it's due in, it's due in three months. It's gonna be cute and beautiful. You sometimes notice things like Pest being bombarded repeatedly for about 300 years by the same barbarian clan. You're like, nope, I'm just gonna ignore that, that's not my concern right now. Mr. Potato is just slowly racking up those barb kills, just softly in the corner. He's already up to plus four. It means he's attacking like an absolute unit right now, which is wonderful. Uh, I'm just sort of cycling units in and out briefly, just to make sure that A, I keep my siege up at this city, which is quite important, but B, I'm also taking out all these pesky units that are... <laughs> Trying to liberate themselves. Could you imagine a imagine a world? The oh, honestly, just chocolate hells and some more iron down here, which is very handy. So I've just got to try and liberate this settler now. Don't you hate that? Isn't that one of the most annoying things when you're just happily killing an AI? It's all going beautifully well, and then they settle a city right before you're about to kill them, and you think, was there any point in doing that? Like, come on, we're delaying the inevitable. It's all that's happening here. Okay, so I think I needed, what, 20-something era score? Maybe just under 30. I ended up getting, um, 63. That is so far of a shot. I do not remember ever shooting that far ahead of where I needed to be. Blimey. Right. Oh, the religion's gone. No, the religions aren't gone, and I'm actually getting one anyway. So you know what? Exodius of the Evangelists. Why not? Let's just do that. I might be able to crusade people if I'm lucky. Ah, a good crusade game, eh? There's, there's, there's no finer joy. There's no finer joy than a good... Oh, you see Byzantium Crusade games are the best. Oh, was that the last city? Oh dear, England, you really had not settled very much. That's, um, that's surprising. Okay, fine. Well, there we go. England's already out. And you can actually see a lot of the city-state armies are beginning to unlevy themselves now, which is a little bit annoying. So I'm going to just get him a coat and... She's got five turns left. Oh no, she's run out of charges. Okay, I'm kind of need to keep an eye on that one. If I can, I've got 14 faith per turn coming in. That's pretty good. I should be able to hire her back soon, but I do need to focus on at least pillaging a little more faith than I'm doing at the moment. That would that would help, I feel. Oh man, just as I get Oglagaki as well. Plus four combat strength to one of my swordsmen. And I thought I had it good, but that's just... It could have been even more ridiculous. Let's get great general points on top of that. We've got urban planning and I think loyalty per turn in cities. That's just going to help recharge the cities I've conquered a bit quicker. But it also means that when I do go to war again, which inevitably I will be doing very soon, um, it just gives me more options. Akkad, I think, is going to be the next next route, route one for me on this one. And there's the religion. Woohoo! Honestly, at this point, anything giving me faith is going to be worth it. I'm getting faith because I want to get my heroes back. That's that's essentially the, the only reason I'm doing anything here. It's a divine inspiration and pilgrimage. Oh, I mean, that'll do. That's another 10 faith per turn, which is, which is great. So the next step is to get Himiko back, which I should be able to do in 10 turns. Feels like a lot of waiting, but actually I think she only takes a thousand faith. Yeah, she does. And I'm already on 48.7 faith per turn. So that, that's useful. Uh, the reason I need her back is because that first wave of city-state levying has just all expired. So I've got Johannesburg, I've got Hattusa, I've got Samarkand, all of them have, and Leventa, they've all taken their units back and it's a little bit desperate, but it's fine, it's fine. To add to the amazing spitting pot of beautiful things, Hannibal is in the game now. He's brilliant. Uh, basically, extra strength, extra movement to all my swordsmen. So yeah, nice stuff. I'm just going to declare war on Mansa Musa. Now the reason I'm doing this A is because I kind of want to go to war with them, which is which is quite logical. But I had a trade route going to them and I just need to release it, because as soon as I can release it, that trader now, which is which has been released, can be moved to a city sent over to Kaguna, which have a city-state quest, and that will be enough to become suzerains with them. 
which means that I should be able to levy the army and use them to attack. So I'm kind of, it's sort of this weird chain thing that I'm doing at the moment, but it should give me the results I'm looking for. Plus, Hippolyta's got 44 melee strength and she heals, and with a CAD I can knock walls of cities down and she'll just heal at the end of the turn anyway, so I think this is pretty effective. She, she's pretty awesome, especially because she's now got a general with her, so now 53 strength against these walls. Kaploosh! Okay, the walls are gone. That's good. That's kind of all I'm looking for, really, to get the walls down so that I can look to attack some cities. Although, actually, Samarkand is about to take its units back in, in one turn. But don't worry, we're already up to 670 faith. It's a slow period this stage of the game, but we are getting there. So here we go. There's the city-state quest. Kabloom! Perfect. This city-state only has warriors, which is wonderful, because warriors can be hired on the cheap and then upgraded, but even cheaper. I've even collected up quite a lot of iron for this very job, which is pretty handy. Everyone come back, upgrade yourselves. Lovely, we're going to have five swordsmen rushing over to help this attack. If the city-states don't do the attack for us, she Hippolyta, she's, she's very effectively taking down the city walls, but I don't need her to take that city just yet. I won't have a loyalty. This six uh, defensive city, now that will be a lot easier to take, so I might just go for that one. Oh my goodness, a great scientist. Now, I was not expecting that. Wonderful. Should we see what boosts we get? The boosts will have to wait until after we've used the swordsmen to just pummel this city into the ground. Lovely stuff. And then Hippolyta will kind of move next turn. I was just saving a governor uh, just so I can put Victor into this taken city. And there we go. Loyalty is already good. Ah, I mean, this army is fantastic. But the thing is, is next turn it's going to get even crazier because I'm just about to unlock Man at Arms, which is nuts. Yeah, this is, this is going to be... Pretty mad. Oh, I mean, man at arms, they're so powerful. 45 strength. So if I just like upgrade all of these guys, in fact, actually, Hippolyta, you just quickly give that a double movement. There we go, now I can upgrade everyone. So that is now attacking 59 strength against enemy units, which is pretty decent, actually. I'll take that. It's going to get even worse. Is it him? Okay. <laughs> Okay, what's the most dangerous army looking like? I think Hattusa's army is the closest. I'm just going to pull her to Hattusa and we'll go and levy that quickly. And here's the scientist, as promised. Castles is literally it. That, that was the biggest letdown. <laughs> you know when you build something up in your head and it's never quite what you expect it to be? Well, that, that was the perfect example. Oh, honestly, anyway, I'm up to 91 faith per turn. That's really good. The average hero lasts for 30 turns, which means to get one hero back, you need to be earning about 33 faith per turn in order to have enough faith by the end of their cycle to get them back. I've got two heroes that needed about 66 faith, so having 91 means that, you know, I've got plenty of faith now. That's really cool. This is where the attack gets just a, just a tad silly now. I mean, <laughs> yeah, uh, I mean, Himiko, I mean, is currently giving a, giving a boost with the Great General to 62 strength. I mean, these walls are coming down quick. Uh, I'll, I'll deal with all these in a second. Himiko is going to just go and take over Hattusa, because I think having extra army is probably worth it for me right now. Boudica. Now, she can convert barbarian units, and I've already got one great general, so it's whether or not I burn her to get rid of some barbarians, but Hungary gets so much movement with the units, but I'm kind of tempted to not really bother so much. I'm going to actually put her on the front lines to help with the other attack. I mean, these men at arms are... Yeah, this city's not going to last very long, and Niani, the capital, I mean, this is just about to, you know, suffer the same fate, so that's fine as well. Don't know if that will take the city. Oh, it did. I didn't even need to double move. That's wonderful. You upgrade, and then double move and do the attack. Brilliant. And then Hippolyta's just going to come and start to batter down these walls as well. Isn't it lovely? I've actually now made a second army, which is going to go after the Aztecs, which is wonderful. Himiko is now going to go towards Samarkand. That's uh, a beautiful thing. And I think the rest of the units are all just quickly upgrading where possible. I haven't got the crossbow upgrade yet, which is a bit of a shame, but it's quite far away. So I'm focusing my gold on the warriors and the swordsmen, because as I say, hungry means that these upgrades are cheap. I love these sort of charge attacks. In you come. Well, bam, the walls get demolished and then... Nope, you think you've got a lead off. There's a second attack. Fantastic. I think actually Marley will be out of the game pretty quick. So I'm already moving this army to the Aztec front line. There's no need 
No need at all to hang around here. I can't surprise the Empire! No, nope, I'm merely passing by. I'm merely passing by. Oh, no, wait, that's a formal war. I did surprise you! Ha ha ha! Oh, how fiendish I am. Now, they do have swordsmen which are appearing, but mostly this is Eagle Warrior territory. And between Boudicca and Himiko, who's just sort of chilling in the area, I mean, we're getting a double bonus from most stuff. I mean, the archers are not getting the same level of bonuses as the other troops, but, you know, we've got enough bonuses here. As discussed, Marley is now out. Black armor, you say? Plus three combat strength for each adjacent levied unit. Oh, you shouldn't have. So here's a little trick you can do with Hippolyta. She can move four tiles, but if I move her one, two, three, with a great general or any other support unit on her, and then I use her own command on the same tile she stood on, Oh, look at that! Now she has another four movement. <laughs> oh dear, that's definitely, definitely what was intended with that, uh, with that particular mechanism. I, I feel like, I mean, what else could they have meant for me to do? Oh, and what's that? Have I got even more army now? Oh dear, oh dear, I seem to have pretty much every unit on the board. Who, how did that happen? And this is how quickly you can floor cities. A one, a two, a three. Ah, yes. And now the city's gone. It's very much the sort of sillit bang method of the dealing with enemies, this one. Victor now has garrison commander, so he's giving 12 loyalty to a city, which is really, really good. Now, it says rebellion in six turns. Now, it's bad, but essentially all that means is that I have six turns to take the next city, which, you know, I'm, I'm hoping, hoping it's not going to take too long. I'm also pillaging extra faith because I just have a feeling that 13 turns on the lifespan of Hippolyta is gonna go by quicker than you might think. Have you ever got to the point where you kind of regret taking so many units with you at once? Like, oh my goodness, there's just a horde of them here, but that's that's okay. Hang on, we can pull you to that, then you can attack. Um, I just need to make sure that my great general and Himiko are kind of nearby, which is true. And then with one big attack, oh, it's not quite taking the city, but that is pretty close to a total, total city capture. The art of war, oh. It helps when you're the only person getting great generals. I really think that just like nobody else is bothering me. There's the next city. Um, I'm just going to, again, just move Victor forward a little bit. Lovely, both cities are now loyal. There we go. And now it's just sort of going along the chain and enjoying each combat for, for what it is. Hang on, well, Blanc like that, man at arms can just totally kill that unit in, in one. Next city surrounded, there's Himiko and there is a great general, so I should be able to, yeah, 64 strength attacks. I mean, that's pretty comprehensive. And then we'll just get you to double attack. I'll get this weaker one to do it, so that I can move my better unit on later. Ah, oh, that was reassuringly easy. Just slicing through the swordsman now, which is really, really cool. Uh, moving my units across. As you can see, I'm having very little problem with actually making sure that I can, can sort of advance and bring the units forward. It's just about making sure I'm getting the decent attacks in at the same time. I think we're doing okay now. This is this is reassuringly effective, this combat. Do you remember the time that the Aztecs had an army? Ah, I remember the time. It was a, it was a fun time for everyone. I'm pretty sure that is it for the Aztecs. Yes, it is. Oh dear, which means we've got one person left, and it's Coupe. Good old Coupe. Marcus Crassus, and also Trong Track. I think that's how you say her name. I could be totally wrong on that one. But anyway, Marcus gives us some amazing sort of thieving ability with the old uh, tiles. I can just sort of pinch tiles from people, which is always relatively entertaining. Oh, Singapore, you don't don't mind if I just sort of put a couple of envoys into you, do you? I think it should be should be pretty fine to, to do that. Actually, the relatively exciting thing is that Coupe, in theory, has 314 military strength. So you never know. I might actually get a bit of a fight. I mean, I'm not. I'm not. I'm clearly not going to get a fight. But I mean, look, their city strength is 22 down here. They have got no no idea what's about to hit them. You know what, he's calling me out on it, and yeah, I'm actually going to just admit that I'm uh, I'm going to war with him. I feel like I, I owe him a little bit. I, actually, I don't know him anything. What am I even talking about? Oh look, they have an army. It's um, maybe a little weaker than I was 
kind of hoping for, but that's okay. Now, the reason I'm just sort of edging around slowly is because I was kind of hoping I could get my great generals nearby first, which I think I can, which is good. So now I can do some couple of attacks just to push myself through. Um, we can start just eating through the units like that. Lovely stuff. So just a, a quick straw poll. Um, do, do you think I brought enough army? I don't know. I, I feel like I might have come underprepared slightly. I mean, he says with no shortage of tongue in cheek, but uh, to, I mean, this is this has been one successful little little endeavour. Um, hang on, I think we're going to go a one, a two, which will should be the walls taken off. It is, yep. Uh, and then we'll go three. And actually, I don't I don't even know what shipbuilding is. <laughs> so I'll see if I can research shipbuilding to do embarked attacks before I actually win the game. Yeah, I really, I don't, I don't have enough army. Oh, I don't actually have enough gold to levy Singapore. I've been relying on Himiko so much. <laughs> oh, dear. Oh, you know, I might be able to pull it off, actually. Hang on. There's one galley, which is, which is great. And then I just need any other city next to water. Any other city next to water. Doesn't matter what city it is. It can be anywhere. It can be anywhere. No? I don't have any of it. Oh, no, I do have one more city. Oh, there we go. Look, you see? So I can just get the second galley shipbuilding. Actually, no. It's still going to be one turn away. I mean, we knew that. We knew that was going to happen. And, um, yeah, there we go. So there's the victory screen. Well, hey, what a challenging game that was, eh? Yeah, hun hungry are a ridiculous combination. And I appreciate that this particular formula and combination of things was maybe a little bit cheesy, but there were some genuine lessons to learn in this. Also, can I just say the scoring on this is ridiculous. 548 points, considering I won on turn 84 or something? I mean, that's mad. Look, my culture is just basically whatever I pick up from other people. My science. Like, exactly the same thing. I did a lot of unit killing in that one, and... Oh, I only lost one, two, three units, and one was right at the end. I mean, that's... That's pretty decent, and most importantly, Total Religion's founded. Good. Good. It's good to know this information. It's very important. But yeah, I, okay, so I know this combination was a little bit silly. We had a lot of city-states in this game. It was a Pangea map, which Hungary really does like. And, you know, having heroes on makes it a little bit easier. I get that totally. Can I just say the secret societies going vampires? Totally not helpful at all. The problem I had is that Mr. Potato, well, he was a bit of a potato, and he was moving so slowly, I physically couldn't get him to the front line in time. Bless him. But it's fine. We can forgive the guy. He's on holiday. Oh, McWhiskey, what a beard you have. If you take anything away from this game, though, that there are some actually genuinely cool tactics you can take into Civ. Anyway, I just won a deity game. I mean, this is a deity game, right? And that was turn 84. I won that. Which is nuts. I'm already on 78 science, and I've barely built more than one campus across the Empire, which is pretty crazy. I, I think people, when they come to deity, they overlook the power of city-state militaries. I mean, for what you get, like, what you pay to what you get, that ratio is absolutely insane at times. Like, sure, okay, Singapore costs 800 to levy. I get that, that's a lot of money. But for that, you get one, two, three, four, five mana arms. Now, you would need significant production power in your empire, or, I mean, a bunch of gold. 640 per mana arms, so that's 3,000 plus gold in order to purchase the same army. Yes, I know it's temporary, but war is like that. You only need a temporary army just to nudge your empire ahead. And on deity, say I like started here and I took over all of England and then took over all of Poland and left it at that, I would own half of this continent. Like even if I turtled from that point and did nothing, I would win the game. Like it would just be ridiculously easy. Secondly, Himiko is just the best hero. Like she's, She's brilliant. She's awesome. And the reason she's so brilliant is A, because you can levy armies. I mean, that levy, using one charge, gives you effectively 800 gold net, which is mad. But using getting her to give you faith from the envoys, that's 75 faith per envoy if I use it on suzerain city-states. That would be 600 faith. That's 60% of the cost of the next hero. So just by getting her, she recharges herself over and over and over, so you never have to worry about getting faith yourself. It, it, it's mad. And actually, any game you go heroes on, um, I mean, yeah, the Sanguine Pack's cool and everything, but you really want to go Void Singers because I had a bunch of monuments across my empire, and that would have given me tons more faith to get more heroes with. 
I also could have got a lot more heroes should I chosen to. I, I didn't really bother because I had so many units. Um, and I wasn't really going for a speed run, although actually 84, turn 84, 800 BC, and we've already won this, I mean that's nuts. But there's a lot of cool deity tactics you should take away from this if you can, and I really advise you have a go, come to Discord, I've got this exact save file, have a go at it, you've seen the map, you know what it all looks like, see if you can do better than me, come and let me know how well you do. I think... And this is a challenge to my own Discord community because I genuinely think there are some of the best players out there on my Discord. They are nuts how good they are and they frequently show me up by like tens of turns. What's the lowest you can get on this? I reckon, I reckon a sub 60, turn 60 victory is possible on this with the right... I, 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 I feel like that's possible. I don't know how you do it, but they often beat me by a good 25%, so... There you go, gauntlet down. Can anyone get below turn 60? I think it's possible. I just want to put it out again. I know I said at the beginning, thank you so much, Potato. I hope your holiday was good. It's been a pleasure to be on the channel. I've been Ursa Ryan. Good night.